And all right, again, let me make this as quick and simple and easy to understand as possible. Okay, I want to go over some verses that describe the Antichrist. All right, first of all, in 1 John chapter 2, verse 18, Little children, it is the last time, and as you have heard that Antichrist shall come, even now are there many Antichrists, whereby we know that it is the last time. All right, now clearly, this is uh, speaking of an expectation of an Antichrist that is to come. All right, and for good reason. So let's go to Matthew 24, where it says, uh, where Jesus is speaking, talking about the end time. And when he's asked, what shall be the sign of thy coming and of the end of the world? And he says, for there shall arise false Christ and false prophets and shall show signs and great wonders insomuch that if it were possible, they shall deceive the very elect. And here it says, uh, shall so shines a great wonders to seduce, if it were possible, even the elect. And so, uh, even those of us that are born again, those of us that are, that are the elect, it's possible that we can be deceived. All right. And if you think that you can't be deceived, you're deceived. <laughs> so, it's, you always got to be on guard, really. So, here in Second Thessalonians Chapter 2, verse 3, Let no man deceive you by any means, for that day shall not come except there come a falling away first, and that man of sin be revealed, the son of perdition. So in context, it's best, in my opinion, to understand this in this way, that when this was written, this, this uh, Antichrist had not been revealed, but it was going to be not long after this was written that the man of sin or the antichrist was going to be revealed and obviously it was revealed when the roman catholic church sprung up all right and there shouldn't be any question about that here in second thessalonians 2 this five five verses later after this one all right it says um, and then shall that wicked be revealed and again that's another reference to the antichrist whom the Lord shall consume with the spirit of his mouth and shall destroy the brightness of his coming. So, again, this is in reference to the end of the world. All right, when Jesus comes in the clouds of heaven and he gathers together the elect and he sends fire down from heaven and destroys all the wicked ones. All right, this is uh, everything in the Bible is consistent. This is not a separate, different event or nothing like that. And so if you connect the dots, everything makes sense, easy to understand. All right, and so also, um, like I talked about in my last video, you can uh, make the parallel or connect the dots with the wicked also being the king of the fourth beast of Daniel, which is the beast of Revelation. And here in Revelation, when it talks about the woman, that's also the fourth beast all right, which reigns over the kings of the earth. Okay, so the the woman, the beast, the mother of harlots, the wicked, uh, the man of sin, the son of perdition, uh, false Christ, and antichrist. Connect the dots; they're all the same. Okay, and there's and if you read like okay, may, let me make this my last point here in Revelation 17. It talks about seven kings there shall be seven kings five are fallen one is and the other is not yet come and when he comes he must continue a short space so this is talking about a succession of kings and connect the dots to the pope in rome and therefore we can conclude that this is talking about a succession of popes all right and so again that pope is the antichrist and the lord will consume him with the spirit of his mouth and shall destroy with the brightness of his coming glory to god